Hello everybody and welcome to the United stand. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer's best Manchester United 11 with transfers. We'll be talking about that tonight. We're looking forward to it. But I just want to say, how are we all feeling? How are we all feeling after that fantastic result for Manchester United last night against Arsenal? It really was something special. And I think, look, the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer thing, I love the fan cams. I love the reactions to the videos, all the comments, absolutely superb. And what I really like is that everybody's saying, we love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but we don't need to make a decision at the moment. And that's it. That is it. Leave the flip-flop shop to the Arsenal fans because they're flip-flopping. And I just want to say on that as well, look, life is short. Football is life, but life is banter and life is fun. And look, if we'd lost last night, I'd called Lacazette the French Charlie Austin. I was going to get absolutely bantered to all the way through February. Absolutely bantered. And I would have took it humbly. I wouldn't have liked it, but I would have took it on the chin. Because if you live by the sword, you die by the sword. People who can't, people who like to give it out, but can't take it, realistically... Get in the hole that you're digging for yourself and understand that you're not here for a long time, you're here for a good time. And we are having a good time at Manchester United at the moment. Now, I want to go through this Ole Gunnar Solskjaer 11. I want to talk about a few things as well. But I'm going to do this by the most important players. And as you can see, I've done it for the Man City game because we're playing them next month. And I think by then, Ole in his own mind should have his best 11. Now, interestingly, when it comes to transfers, I'm going to go through the team and talk about transfers. But the reality is when it comes to transfers, we've, we've got a few days left in this transfer window. It's not looking good. And I'm just going to drop in a, a seed of thought for you there and say what's going on at Manchester United is fantastic. Eight wins from eight. It's not only Cardiff, it's not only Newcastle. We've been to Spurs, we've been to Arsenal, and we've deserved both wins. And I, I think the Arsenal result was more significant because they're blaming Petr Cech. They're blaming Petr Cech for losing. I mean, I don't really think he was at fault for any of the goals. What I did notice is Arsenal had a lot of possession in the final third and did nothing. So if you want to blame people, blame your favourites, your flip-flop FC, because you don't really want to blame Torreira, do you? You don't really want to be blaming uh, Aubameyang. You don't really want to be blaming Lacazette, Lacazette because it doesn't fit your agenda. But the reality is you had a lot of ball in the final third and you didn't do anything with it. So you you search around for somebody to have a go, uh, have a, have a go at and you're having a go at... Better check. And I don't think that was your problem at all. So I think that's a, another feather in the cap of Manchester United because defensively, yet again, we were very, 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 very good. So very, very pleased with Manchester United and very, very pleased with how we played in that game. Um, also, what I want to say is that in the relation to transfers, um, it's looking unlikely. And that seed of doubt I would throw in there is I do think that United have messed up this transfer window. As much as everything's going well now... I don't think this is going to happen, but imagine in February and March, we don't win a game. We'll all be going, why didn't we sign players in January? We needed to do this, we needed to do that. And I think at least we should have moved a few players down out. I think, again, and I've got to be honest, everything's going great at United, but that squad's not going to win the league. It's not. And it, and it needs four or five players still. It does. And I'm going to go through that in the eleven as well. And I think the club have sat on their arse again. This is above Oli. This is above the players. It's not the players' fault. It's not Oli's fault. It's not the coaching staff's fault. This is the board again, sitting on their pot of gold. And they should have used this January transfer window. Even if it was to just get rid of a couple of players. But they've done nothing with it. And I think that is a shame when Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is you know, pouring out miracles and we're bathing in it. We are. We're bathing in it. Anyway, David De Gea, obviously, this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, what I believe is his best 11 at Manchester United with transfers. So, David De Gea in goal. I don't think anybody can doubt that. Romero was De Gea last night. We shouldn't forget that. That save he made at 2-1 at the start of the second half was De Gea-esque. It was absolutely superb. And But there's a world of difference between De Gea and Romero. But there's a world of difference between De Gea and Lloris and Leno. And, 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 and Alisson and Edison. He is on a level that is beyond everybody else. He's the best goalkeeper in the world. And he's the most important player that Manchester United have in their team. The second most important player, and definitely in there, is Paul Pogba. I have been saying this about Paul Pogba for so long. His performance last night was indicative of exactly what, why, and how he will become the best midfielder in the world. People talk about Paul Pogba world class. You got Piers Morgan on Talk Sport yesterday before the game, slating Pogba. We've had Sooners, we've had everybody having a go at him. We've even had our own ex legends, well, they're still legends, our own ex players doing it as well. But the bottom line is Pogba gets called world class elect because he has the ability to be world class. People don't just say it because of his dabs and his haircut. They've seen, like I've seen, what he can do. And how many times have you and I said 
That, well, I personally have said, I've not seen a centre midfielder since Paul Gascoigne who can get the ball and run with the ball. And that's devastating. You know, he's physical, he can put a tackle in, he's got a great passing range. But he's got something that so few people over the decades have ever had. A central midfielder who can dribble with the ball and carry the ball. And he did it countless times against Arsenal yesterday. I think it's one of his best performances in a United shirt. He was superb. Against Torreira, who for me has probably been one of the players of the year in, in, in the season. Yeah, definitely signed of the season he did make him look like a b-tech mark noble he made him look terrible and that's what pogba is and how many times did we see paul pogba driving forward with the ball under jose Mourinho? i don't think he was allowed to do it so ollie's just got ollie is getting the best out of him and i thought he was absolutely superb last night and that is why paul pogba for me got a 10 out of 10 but that is why paul pogba is our most important player and i would i would be considering giving him the captaincy because when you've got a player who can drive forward no i don't want to move you paul i want to talk about this when you've got a player who can drive forward not with a yellow pen why has it gone blue again really annoys me this does really annoys me i want a blue i don't want that one i want yellow um when you've got a player who can drive forward like he can from there and there and there it, it, it's a killer it's an absolute killer for the opposition so paul pogba 100 percent goes in and he was absolutely superb last night and we've got a lot a lot to be excited about in relation to him now my next player uh, i don't think there's going to be much surprise here is marcus rashford these are the players that i feel are the most important for manchester united at the moment and i certainly don't think we need to buy anybody in these positions either so marcus rashford look he was only on the pitch for a short period of time yesterday i don't think him and rashford him and martial came on and did played particularly well. I thought their touch was a bit off. They looked a little bit uh, less sharp than they would have done when they start a game, which shows how difficult it is to come off the bench sometimes. But what they did do is they, they, they took that game away from Arsenal. The Arsenal were terrified of their pace. Their movement was far superior to that of Lukaku and Sanchez, who both had reasonable games, but Martial and Rashford were just on a different planet and they terrified them. And, I, you know, actually, I thought Martial came on and was pretty poor, but he was there to score the goal. Rashford, absolutely essential to Manchester United and 100% is our number nine. The next most important player for me is Victor Lindelof. I think it started with Mourinho. I will put my hands up and say Mourinho got this right. Um, he, you know, he's the one success story of this season for, for Mourinho and it's continued under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as well. His ability to win tackles, his ability to bring the ball out from the back, his uh, reading of the game to sense and sniff out danger. He was good in the air yesterday as well. You know what? Arsenal fans will tell you that the French Charlie Austin and uh, the Gabonese uh, Jamie Vardy, they're two of the best strikers in the league. Well, all right. Vardy got a pat tap in. Austin had a couple of shots. But reality is, I think Eric Bay and Lindelof had them in their pocket. And, uh, you know, a striker's always going to get a chance in a good team. But they were more or less kept very quiet. And I thought, I think Lindelof has been absolutely superb. So that's, that's, that's position four for me that I think is in an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer best 11 at the moment and uh, he's that massively important the next player may be a little bit controversial some others would go with the player i'm going to go with next but anthony martial is absolutely essential to me now we won yesterday it was very very good i personally thought goal apart and some people will be blinkered by the goal i thought alexi sanchez overall game was average i gave him a 7 out of 10 because of the goal but i thought his overall performance was average at best he couldn't hold the ball up in the second half or the first half um, his passing is very slow. He doesn't move quick enough on the ball. He always wants to cut it back and look up. And he slows us down a lot. And also, I did notice that Pogba was brilliant in the second half when Sanchez tired. Because Alexis Sanchez, as we all know, he wants to come into this area. He wants to come into that area that Paul Pogba wants. And that doesn't help us. Anthony Martial is more than happy to just occupy that area so Pogba can operate in that area. And it makes us far, far better because it stretches the op opponent's midfield and their defence. Whereas if it's Pogba and Sanchez, everybody knows they're there and you can jo you can box them off. And, and that, that happened a lot. And Pogba's freedom comes from Martial. Martial was there with the goal yesterday. He's got a great goals to game ratio. He terrifies people. Um, he's a bit frustrating, but I think he's massively important to us. And the sooner he signs the contract, the better, as far as I'm concerned. And then this guy, Ander Herrera, a player that I've always liked. There's people in the United Stand community who I respect who don't really rate him that much. I can sort of understand why over the last 18 months. Again, I think Mourinho, when you look at players that Mourinho ruined, it's easy for us to talk about Pogba, Martial, Sanchez, Rashford. But actually when you look at the performances of the last month, you could make a case that the player he ruined the most was Ander Herrera. In his first season, he was a player of the year. 
And then for the sec- for season two and three, Herrera was hardly playing. Her Pog- uh, Solskjaer comes in and Herrera is absolutely fantastic. And I don't, I, I would argue, I would definitely, definitely argue this. Is there a better box-to-box right-sided midfielder in the Premier League at the moment? Now, I'm sure Manchester City and Liverpool will shout a name out. Um, but I, I, I genuinely think he is absolutely superb in that position. He can't be our player of the year. You can't get too excited about it because he's only done it in a month. But it makes you wonder why we didn't use him in that position. Because we all knew when we signed Matic nearly two years ago that our best midfield was Matic, Herrera and Pogba. But it's never really materialised much. Certainly not under Mourinho. And it's happening now. And he is absolutely essential to us. And you know, it is a bit like a new signing. It is a bit not like a new signing. He has been absolutely superb for Manchester United. Now, this lad will be controversial, but I think Luke Shaw has solved the problem for us. And I thought, I've actually been a big, big, big backer of Luke Shaw. And there are people on the United stand, (coughs) rants, who don't think he's good enough. And there's still people who don't think he's good enough now. And even Mad Marcus said last night, well, he was at fault for the goal. And all these positions I'm going through here, we don't need to sign anybody for any of these positions, by the way. I think these are the big positions that that should be nailed down in, in, in Ollie's mind and going into next season. But Luke Shaw, two player of the months out of five, uh, which were in August and September, he's dropped off a little bit, but yesterday was probably one of his best performances in the United shirt. And if you want to blame him for the Aubameyang goal, if you watch it back, 10 out of 10 Pogba was at fault because he didn't track the move of Torreira, which sort of got Luke Shaw stuck in two minds. And obviously it goes to Aubameyang behind him. But if it had gone to Torreira in front of him, people still would have blamed Luke Shaw. He was he, he was basically a rock and a hard place. He didn't know what to do. He was damned if he did and damned if he didn't. But apart from that, he was he was the main catalyst of the uh, Lingard second goal. Picked it up at left back, ran right across the pitch and played it through into Lukaku, I think it was. Um, he was brilliant in the air. He kept Aubameyang in his pocket apart from that goal. Kept going forward, going forward, blocks the lot. I thought it was an absolutely brilliant performance from Luke Shaw, and Luke Shaw can be our left back. I think he's got all that. I really do believe I'm right about that him. But I like this one because I'm wrong about this guy. I'm totally wrong about this guy. Jesse Lingard, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry because I've always said that Jesse Lingard, you can't win a title with him. And he's a bench player. That's nothing against bench players. Nothing against bench players at all. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer was a bench player and he was absolutely top class. So being a bench player for Manchester United isn't a bad thing. But Jesse Lingard, he absolutely owns the Emirates. It's his own little dance arena. He was superb again yesterday and he gets under the skin of certain teams. And yesterday, again, I don't think he had an amazing performance but his impact, you can be a player that can have a bad game, but your impact on a game destroys it. Like Ronaldo, I've seen Ronaldo have a bad game, but so many people are worried about him. It creates other opportunities for other players. If, you know, if you're a good player, you can have a bad game, but still have an impact on a game because you can make the opposition worry about you, which frees up other people. And I think Jesse Lingard was the master of that yesterday. He never stopped running and he can always pop up with a goal. You give him a chance, he'll take a goal and... He gets what Manchester United's all about. Now, I think the jury's still out on whether a Premier League side that's going to win a Premier League can have Jesse Lingard in a starting eleven. I think that's a debate to carry on. But there's no, there should be no question that he's massively important to Manchester United. And as things stand at the moment, he would be, obviously, in an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, starting eleven. Now, you obviously want, to, you, want him, you want Jesse Lingard to be coming into the central areas a lot more. You do. He's not. He's wasted out on the wing. He's, you know. And what we did, I, I like the interchangeability about these three. And we saw it with Lukaku and Sanchez yesterday. But for me, those three, I like the interchangeability because what you can do, you can do what you did yesterday. You can pull Rashford to the right. You can put Lingard in there, and then you got Martial and Rashford off the flanks with Lingard pushing forward, but also helping the midfield out. I thought it was a very, very clever away formation to use yesterday by Oli and I really really liked it and Lingard is very important but this is the first position I would say there is a question mark I think transfers wise are we going to make any transfers in January doesn't look like the club are going to do it which is a shame but we in the summer we need to and I think this is the first position that I would say we need to buy somebody in the summer I think that 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 so you've got Seven positions, I don't think we need to buy any before. I think we're all right in those positions. I think we're well stocked and we've got the right players. And I think we can win the title with those players. But the Lingard position out on the right, I think that needs a better 
a better player who can naturally play out on the right. So that, that would be my position one. Um, the next player I'm going to talk about, because I'm doing this in order of importance, Eric Bay. Um, the jury's still out on Eric Bay. It was a very, very good performance against Arsenal. He has been reckless in the past with red cards and injuries. But for now, for now, if you're talking about the next few months of the season, Lindelof and Bay are, are going to be better than Lindelof and Jones. Whether he'll bring Smalling in, because Lindelof and Smalling, could they be better than Lindelof and Bay? I personally think there was a couple of balls a couple of times where Arsenal sort of carved us open. They knocked it into the space. Lacazette's chasing it. Aubameyang's chasing it. But they've got Eric Bay with a yard on him. You're not catching Eric Bay. He is lightning fast, which is very important in the back four because Jones ain't quick and Lindelof's not super quick either. So Bay's pace is a major asset. He's actually quite good on the ball, but most important of all, he's physical. He's good in the air and he's physical. And Jones ain't good in the air and he's not particularly physical. And Lindelof, that's not really his game. So you've got the perfect ploy there, the perfect sort of centre-back partnership. And Bay is very important. But again, like that right-sided midfield position, that is definitely that is definitely a position that we need to be improving on uh, transfer-wise. So that, for me, would be another one that gets a yellow mark along with the Lingard position that we do need to improve. But for now, you would go with Bay and Lindelof. No, that Lingard without question. Um, the next most important position, Nemanja Matic. Um, I thought Matic started badly against Arsenal, but we are definitely getting to see the best of Nemanja Matic under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And the irony is fantastic because Matic loved Mourinho, but Mourinho made him look crap. A new manager comes in and makes him look great. And that just shows you the turnaround it just shows you the toxicity and the negative effect a tyrant like Mourinho was having on our team. And it shows you the amazing man management skills that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has, that he can grab hold of these players that were definitely behind Mourinho, like Matic and Lukaku, and get them playing better than they were under a manager that they liked playing for. It is not lost on me and it should not be lost on United fans. Again, the Matic position, um, he played well yesterday and it's the, you know, till the end of the season, Matic, Pogba, Herrera has got to be our midfield three. But again, for me, it's another position in the summer that we need to improve on. I just think that with Matic, his lack of mobility sometimes causes us problems. It causes us problems against Spurs and at times it causes us problems against Arsenal. The better teams, his lack of mobility is a problem. But he's not playing badly by any means and I think we'll be fine till the end of the season. Which leaves us with the right back. I think this position is probably going to be the most controversial of the lot. But how apt that I actually have gone with the low. I think Delo is the right back that we should be playing at Manchester United right now. And I actually, I'm not even going to star him with a yellow because I think you don't need a right back if this guy works out. Now, Ashley Young against Arsenal was the weak spot. I don't think he had a terrible performance. I think I gave him a 6 out of 10. He thought he was, you know, OK. But they, it, it's not lost on me, like I say, that Arsenal highlighted him as the weak spot. And that was all their attacks. Everything they did came down that left-hand side. And Ashley Young did okay, but he's a weak fullback. He's a good attacking fullback because he used to be a winger. He's into fullback. His positional sense isn't great. He's not very physical because he's very small. He doesn't read the game particularly well. He gives a load of effort and he wears the captain's armband with pride. And I, you could argue that we can get by with him till the summer. But I actually think Delow should be playing ahead of him because he's taller, which is physical, and that's important. I think he's, you know, probably... Speed-wise, there's not much in it. I think attacking-wise, Delo actually has got a better cross than Young, who's got a very good cross. And I think Young's 34, isn't he? So the future is Delo. And I don't think it's a position that we need to, to buy anybody for. But it's becoming a little bit concerning that so many teams are targeting Ashley Young all the time. And that's because defensively he's pretty weak. So I would go Delo. I'm sure a lot of you would go Ashley Young. So that, for me, is Manchester United's best 11 as of now. At this moment in time, I think it is Manchester United's best 11. Um, get your comments in below and tell me if you agree or you disagree. But I think that that is it for the rest of the season. And the three positions that I think we need to be looking at are Lingard on the right hand side, Eric Bailly and Nemanja Matic. I think they're the three positions in the summer I would like to see some real investment in. And in the Bailly position, maybe you're looking at Koulibaly. In the Matic position, maybe you're looking at Ndombele, in Diddy, somebody like that with a bit more mobility. And in the Lingard position, maybe you're looking at Herving Lozano. Maybe you're looking at uh, a Douglas Costa, I don't know. But we need somebody who's more outright. And that's nothing against Jesse Lingard, by the way. Because I, I think Lingard 
Lingard's amazing at the moment. I think Lingard does his most more damage in the middle. I think you could almost, in some games, drop Herrera and play Lingard as the right-sided midfielder. Or you can play him centrally and then put Rashford and Martiali either side. So that interchangeability is really important. And that interchangeability, it would be absolutely terrible of me for not to talk about the wider squad, specifically Lukaku and Sanchez. I think the genius of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is that in 99, he played in a fantastic team, the best team the Premier League's ever seen. But they had four top-class strikers. Andy Cole, Dwight York, Teddy Sheringham, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And Sir Alex Ferguson kept them all happy. How do you do that? How do you keep four top-class strikers very happy? Well, Ole knows because he was the one who was on the bench a lot. And what's he trying to do at Manchester United and seems to be achieving at the moment? He's got Martial Rashford, who's his first choice, a bit like Cole and York were. But he's also got Lukaku and he's got Sanchez, a bit like Sheringham and uh, Solskjaer. And they're very important because yesterday... They made their, you know, two assists from Lukaku, two very good assists. A goal from Sanchez, a very important goal. Martial comes off the bench and scores. Four forwards, all internationals, all very, very good in their own right, all happy in a Manchester United short shirt and all motivated. That, you know, Chelsea is struggling to find one. Spurs' best strikers are injured. Man City and Liverpool are irrelevant. Arsenal, well, you know, beyond Aubameyang and Lacazette, they look very, very weak. We've got four strikers. That, again, is a genius move from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And you've got to mention that in what is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's best eleven, Because it's not about 90 minutes, it's about 70 minutes. It's about freshening it up. You look at the game yesterday against Arsenal, 2-1, 20 minutes to go. You know Arsenal are working towards that last 10 minutes where United will just go deep. They can start pummeling bo balls into the box and maybe nick an equaliser. What do United do? They make the changes and they take the game away. They take the game away. Pogba keeps driving forward. Martial taps it into an empty net. 3-1. Good night. Get get out and do your fan cams and get ranting because you've, you've lost. And that is the importance of good substitutions around the 70-minute mark, especially in attacking positions. If you can bring a, a fresh Sanchez and Lukaku one or a fresh Rashford and Martial like we did in that game, it takes the game away from people and it stops you having to have that squeaky bum time in the last 10 minutes because we didn't have that. We were comfortable. So that is massively important from Solskjaer as well. So that's my team. Get your comments in below if you've got anything that you would do differently. I imagine some of you would probably put Ashley Young at right back, but for me, I would have Delo. I think it's got to be Bailey and Lindelof. And the reality is as well, let's not forget that I, I, I love Paul Robinson. He's one of our moderators. He comes on the calls. He's very, 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 very good in what he says. And the thing that always rings in my ear about this is what's our best 11? What's our philosophy? We just don't know what it is. And we've been talking about that to be honest with you, even back in the Van Hal days. So we've probably been talking about that for four or five years. What's our best 11? What's our philosophy? In the space of six weeks, we know what our best 11 is, more or less, give or take one or two players. We know our best 11 in relation to nine players. We didn't know that with Mourinho. And we also know what our philosophy was. And, you know, we've not had to rewrite the history of Manchester United. We've not had to pay some bloody contractors to come in and survey the club and define, you know, let's have little focus groups, get the flip charts out. What do we want our philosophy to be? Let's go through each... It was very simple. And it's why it frustrated so many United fans. It's because having a philosophy in a best 11 is a piece of piss when you've got the squad and history this club's got. The philosophy has always got to be intense attack, risk football with a strong defence. And we've done that. And your best 11 has always got to be consistently played because you will build results of results of consistency and all right we didn't play our best 11 against Arsenal last night but the most important area of the pitch was consistent the three midfielders have been very consistent Pogba Herrera and Matic week in week out what's the most important part of a football team not the glory part the goals not the clean sheets the goalkeeper it's the engine room it's the midfield and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done something that Mourinho seemed oblivious to be able to do and and uh, Van Hal to a certain extent he's got a midfield three that is his starting midfield three and they understand each other's role CDM Matic my job protect the back four shield Herrera my job is box to box energy tenacity get the ball feed the attackers Pogba my job is to be the creative spark in the midfield to drive the ball forward or to pass the ball forward and to assist when we're on the defense it's very easy they all enjoy they all enjoy those roles it's the best of each player and it gives us a focal point that when you do go to Arsenal and you go you know what Martial and Rashford I'm going to keep you a bit sharper for the Premier League Lukaku and Sanchez this is your chance but behind you you've got a midfield three that you can count on I'm not dropping McTominay in there or Fellaini there with the five yard sideways crab football I'm putting the best midfield we've got 
So there's no excuses for you. You go out, you express themselves. And they did. So that having that having that best 11, more or less sorted, that philosophy, it's changed it around for Manchester United. But certainly, I think, get your best 11 in there if you agree or disagree, but also the positions that you feel that we need to improve in. Because one thing I would say is, it looks like we've wasted this January transfer window, which I'm not happy about. But as we have wasted that January transfer window, I think we can all agree we ain't going to go and sign six or seven players in the summer. I think we need five. We ain't going to sign five. We can't sign five. Woodward can't sign five players in four months. It's impossible. So we're going to have, I think, three ceiling. Well, to be honest with you, when I look at that as an 11, I, I, would, I would go with the right side of midfielder, a CDM and a centre-back. And I think they, if they're of the right quality, then that would improve us massively. Those three positions for me are the most important. What are they for you? Because we may only make three signings in the summer and they're the three biggest for me. Thanks everyone for watching. Please do drop a like on the video. If you've not watched all the fan cams, there's loads of them. We've got Robbie, we've got Ty, we've got me, we've got Rance. We've got loads of fans having their voice. Um, get involved in the channel. Subscribe if you're new, bottom right-hand corner. Please do smash a like on the video and get your comments in below. What a change around at Manchester United. We now know a philosophy. We pretty much know our best 11. And most important of all, people can't keep saying it's luck. People can't keep saying it's only Cardiff, it's only Newcastle. We went to Arsenal, who'd been unbeaten, I think, since the opening game of the season. And we made them look very average. We made them look very average. We didn't ride our luck like we did in the second half against Spurs. We weren't reliant on De Gea because he wasn't on the pitch. We defended well as a unit and we were clinical and expressive on the attack. It was a perfect away performance and Arsenal can say they gifted it to us. I think we were just better. I think the manager te um, tactically schooled your manager. I think our midfield was on a level way better than yours. Our defence was better than yours and our attack was better than yours. It was a very, very good away performance. And I tell you what, banter aside, Arsenal fans, you need to just sometimes, like some Arsenal fans have done, just sit back and go, we weren't good enough. We were not good enough. And you can shout about the millions that have been spent. Tough shit. You weren't good enough. And I tell you what, if we go to the Emirates in a few weeks' time and we get beat 4-0 in the way, in the manner that we beat you last night, I won't, I'll moan about it because I don't want to lose to you. But I would sit back and go, you know what? We just weren't good enough. And I think that's the great thing about United fans and some other clubs is that when they do lose, they will just put their hand up and say, look, we weren't good enough. You weren't good enough. We were brilliant. We were better than you. And our progress on a graph it's going through the roof at the moment. And I'm looking forward to PSG. I'm looking forward to Man City. I'm looking forward to Liverpool because they're the tests that Oli and United need to be tested against. Thanks everyone for watching. Tomorrow we've got Sunday Night Live at 8 o'clock as well. Uh, loads to get through. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you all soon.